Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video, we're going to have it a little bit easier than we had it in the previous video. We're just going to create ourselves a detail view for each of these pictures. Now, we're going to follow on with the idea that we're going to do the bare minimum to illustrate the proof of concept. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on one of these pictures and this will represent how it works once we go a little bit more dynamic. So the idea here is that we want to be able to click an image and be taken to a detail view. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating myself a new controller called the Detail Controller. Now, what you can do is just copy and paste from the gallery controller and delete the bits that you don't need. Or if you want the practice, you can go ahead and set this up yourself. So we're in App Bundle Controller. Our class is the Detail Controller. And we also want to extend Symphony's Controller. And of course, PHP Storm is going to bring the appropriate use statement in for me, saving me a bit of effort. We're going to have a public function, which in this case, I'm just going to call index action. We'll need an image, which at the moment, we're not going to concern ourselves with. And then we want to return this render. And we'll create a new template under a directory called detail, inside which we'll have the index HTML.twig. And into that template, we're going to pass this image. And that should be about it at this stage. Once this image becomes an object, we'll have a few more properties available to us. But for now, it's just going to be a hard-coded string. So I'll go back into my gallery controller and I'll just take this first one out. And that should work because we're going to still be pointing at this images directory under which landscape summer beach is a valid image. So let's jump into resources views. I'm going to create that new template, which instead of typing it all out again, I'll just take a copy thereof. And a really nice thing about PHP Storm is it will go ahead and actually create the directory and the file inside that directory. And if you've got any further slashes in the path, it will also create any subdirectories as well. We'll start off by extends that base template. And then inside we'll have the block body. And I'll immediately close off that block simply because I always tend to forget to do so a little later on. And we'll just start by saying image as the source of images. Remember, this starts from our web root, which will be here. So it'll just be slash images, and then the name of the image that we pass in, which in our case is just going to be the file name. Now this again will change as we go through a little later on, but for the moment that will be good enough. We'll want some alt text on there, I should imagine, a little later on. Let's check inside the detail controller. So we're not actually set up the annotation, so this won't work until we do. We'll have the annotation of root, uppercase R, and it would have been nice there actually to get PHP Storm to bring in the use statement for me. And um, we'll just set this one to slash view. This detail seems a little bit weird from a user's point of view. And we'll just call this view as well. So we should be able to hit slash view. And we're always going to see this same image regardless of which image we actually click in our gallery. So back inside the gallery in the template, I'll change this up to always just go to slash view, which would work. But instead of doing that, instead of hard coding, we can use path and we'll point the path at view. And that just means if we ever go ahead and change up the root named view, we don't need to go in and change the path everywhere as well. So that's quite nice. Let's give that a refresh. So each of these images should work when clicked. This should take us to slash view. You can see that's the full size image. Inside our detail, I'll just tidy this up to be a little bit nicer. Basically, we're just making use of bootstrap stuff here. So if we give it a refresh, it just looks a little bit nicer. We'll have some tags a little later on. But the one interesting thing is that we're still going to allow people to click the image so that when they do, they can go ahead and do whatever they need to do, save the image as or, or whatever. I think on Windows, it actually gives you the option to set that as your desktop. But that's the reason why I've wrapped it in the anchor. So what we'll do a little later on is we'll pass through a slug. This would be equivalent to the slug, a uniquely identifiable way of naming our image. And then with that slug, we'll look up the actual image information from the database. So we'll have something like slug passed in there. But for now, this should be good enough. And the reason that I'm not just sort of in line in that bit there, which would actually work for the moment, is because, as I say, a little later on, this image itself is going to be an object, not just a string. So whilst we'd be saving a little bit of space, now we'd still have to revert that a little later on. But yep, a nice and easy one. See you in the next video.